be able to, to find each other across the world and become a, a, a big family. Was it a struggle to get Maddox? Um, it wasn't easy, but I don't think it should be. I don't think in some cases it should be as difficult to adopt because I think more people would if it was a... Um, but uh, it, it was a bit, but it was worth it. I mean, it was... You know, it's, uh, somebody said to me, you didn't have nine months of being pregnant, so... <laughs> You know, yeah. Suddenly one day, so I went, it was in the middle of Beyond Borders, it was uh, during the Africa section. It was That you it, got the call? The, no, that uh, I'd, I'd been, I met him when he was three months old, yeah. but all the paperwork was done when he was seven months. And so I was in the middle of shooting this movie and, um, and, had to, and went to the airport. They gave me the day off. I had went to the airport and um, a nurse handed me Maddox and I went back to this rented house by myself and I'd never, I'd never been around kids my you whole life. You had no instruction? Nobody had... No, I called my nothing. mom. <laughs> and I just said, you know, do they have many, how many bottles a day? How many, you know, yeah. what do I do? How do you... How you do had you... no help? Um, I did when I was on set. Yeah. But I kind of, I think I felt guilty about not having given birth and been there for the first seven months. So I felt like I had to, uh, you know, sweat and, yeah. and bleed a bit to, to earn some kind of parenthood. So I, I, I didn't have as much help as I probably should have had at, at the beginning because I was falling asleep a lot on set and I was... A bit, um, maybe not the best mom even at times because I was just not, um, you know, as good as I could have been. But but the UN did. I traveled first uh, to Cambodia with the film, and then I went back twice with, with UNHCR to visit with people who had returned from the camps in Thailand. Tell me how that role has evolved for you. We'll come back to Beyond the Borders. How has that role evolved for you? Because you're now being honored because of the work you do, and and a lot of attentions come to you because of this, uh, because you're the visible expression of of a commitment. Um, well, is, it, I, is it a significant I, portion of your life now? It's, it's a very big portion of my life. Are you life traveling around the world all the time now? Yeah, every time I get to, I, I just recently, I, I, I finished a film and, and the, I went uh, immediately to uh, the border of Ingochetia, border of Chechnya, Ingochetia, yeah, sure. um, and spent time in Moscow and then went back and got Maddox and we went, I went into Congo. You took um, Maddox to Congo? He stayed did, in Uganda because it wasn't safe for yeah, him in Congo. Did you take him to the, to the border of Chechnya? No, they, they, uh, he had to stay in London because he usually travels with me everywhere, but I was warned that uh, because of the Chechen-Russian situation that it might not be um, safe for him. No, you, on the border, what do you do when you go to the border? Do you look um, at refugees and, and try to make sure that... I don't... I, 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 um, I do a few things. I mean, I've really, I've really tried to just... I never wanted to become a goodwill ambassador. I was never... That was never my intention. Right. I had to travel with you and for... A, asked no press with me and I just wanted to educate myself and and when they asked me I um I was really happy to support them because I learned a lot about them and I wanted people to know about the organization and to know positive things about refugees and and how inspiring they are and how strong they are and you know not all the negative things you hear um and so a lot of times I I, I do keep journals and I do speak about when I have a chance like this but a lot of times in the field it's just um a lot of sitting with a family and, and asking them um, you know, where they've been, under hearing their story, um, you know, meeting with children and spending time with them and thinking either you know, their dreams and their hopes and uh, you know, just being a friend, <laughs> being somebody who represents my country and all countries in the United States to say I'm here that you're not forgotten and, and people care and, and we'd love to spend time with you and your human beings and, and we are sorry you're going through this. If you could be the stimulus for reasonable change, something that would be reasonable to do, I mean, obviously you'd love to be able to provide shelter and, and a job and security and a whole lot of other things, mm -hmm. and an effort to return to their homeland, all of those kinds of things, and right. to live in peace, all that you would like to do. But what is the pressing need? Well, I think awareness is so much of it because, because it's, you know, I, I was overwhelmed by the huge amount. I, there are 20 million people under the care of UNHCR right now. There's so that many displaced people. How many? 20, 20 million. Half of those, uh, about half of those are children. You know, that, that, there's, that they're working in over 100 countries. And living in camps or living? A, a lot of them are living in camps. Some are living in, some are hidden in the borders of Colombia because of the, the, the dangers right. of being, uh, you know, War. declaring right. things. They're hiding in different houses. They're hiding right. in shelters with no... Right, no, right. Because of, of the... It's all different. You know, yeah. obviously, uh, in the Balkans, in certain areas, they, they're in gymnasiums. They're not in... It's all different. Um, but the but need is for, the for recognition it's, it's going to and a therefore... place and saying, why, why did it become, you know, how is it that there are three million people who have crossed this border? What's going on inside the country? You know, that, that you know, when, when, uh, when Afghanistan and Pakistan, we suddenly, we were suddenly, suddenly everybody was aware of that situation. But months before, the Taliban had been in power for seven years. For and... 20 years, people had been in camps. Um, when there's instability in areas, it's like Congo or 
or you know, Columbia, let's say in some cases they become say, pawns. Why, why has it gotten to this point where until it explodes in a huge human crisis, or there are people who are running for their lives, or their house has been burned, or they're being macheted in the middle of the Congo, why does it have to get that bad for us to say, what's feeding this war, or you know, if they're fighting for democracy, let's help them before they lose it. You know, let's let's try to do some prevention. That's, I mean, I, never to be preachy, but it's just that kind of thing where I'm walking around saying, well, how how can there be this much death, or how can there be this much displacement, or how can there be um, this and, and what's the answer thing? that you find? Well, I want to know what causes it, and I'm starting to realize that, you know, something funds when you when you look when you go to the Congo, for example, and you see there's gold and there's coal and this and and there's which is the stuff in cell phones, right. and and these little kids are being, you know forced to, to do manual labor to pull it out of the ground, and then they give it to militia guys, and right. then they give it to government officials that are corrupt, and then they give it, sell it to big companies, who eventually it ends up in our phones. So we need to know who we're buying from. We need our countries to be really strong. That's one thing, because we obviously feed these wars, you know, in some way. In some way, we're not responsible enough to know exactly what, and I'm not saying America, I'm saying everybody's, sure. you know, what our policies are in these other countries. And, and so it's not, well, it's exploded into war, and now we have to send the military aid, because that's too late, really. So I don't know. That's, that's what I've started to come to. I've started to, to really wonder about why it's, you know, how is it that the world is so imbalanced that we are the small, small percentage of people that are living with, with uh, everything that the, we the, have. All the resources we have. Yeah. And, and we saw the trailer from Beyond Border. Tell me about the story and why it appeals to you and, and what we learn from it. Um, it is a... I've been like pitching this for us an epic love story, <laughs> but it's um. <laughs> You've been pitching this. Well, an epic you know, love story. people keep saying, "What is it about?" So it's about so many things. It's um, it is an epic love story, but it, and it and it deals. An with, epic love story is one in which. How do you define well, an epic love it's, story? To me, it's it's a great love story because there are two people who, I think, the greatest love is if you can find somebody that opens your eyes and makes you a better person and inspires you to do better things with your life, and um, that's that that's a great love. Somebody that doesn't just accept you as you are, but. It helps you to, to uh, and they do that for each other. They, they are, uh, and they also have their heart in the same place. So they have similar goals and similar passions, and yet because of responsibility to some things, they are not together, for most of the movie. And and because um, of the commitment to something else. Yeah, and I think that's responsible, and that's something that's that's good to be looked at in a film. Um, but uh, but this film goes from Ethiopia in 1984 to the Thai Cambodia border late 80s, to Chechnya in 94, which is very interesting because. Those situations are, in some ways, different. In some ways, not very different sure. today. Um, and uh, and just it deals with relief, relief workers, the UN, corruption, um, famine, desperation of people, refugees, but also just friendships and love and, yeah. and all of that. Yeah, but at the core is a love story. Well, I think the core in the core is the ch about the choices we make because the core really is. And I think for some people it'll be the love story. For some people it'll be the countries. It's a, it's really not one thing or the other. And really, it's it's at the end of the day. Um, you know, we have these, uh, this opportunity to make a choice. Everybody watching this right now probably has something they think maybe they'd like to do, have always wanted to do, or something they left mm -hmm. behind that they maybe think, okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to make the call, or I'm going to go to that place I've never gone to, or I'm going to decide to change my life for the better right now. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me.